Com. I'm doing interviews with different Java One speakers um, who will be at the Java One conference in San Francisco from September 22nd through September 26th. With me, I have Mark Heckler. How are you doing, Mark? Fine. How are you, good, Steve? Good. As you can see, this is a lively household. I have kids, some my <laughs> own and some other people's running around behind me. So how about you? You all ready for your, for your Java One sessions? Uh, well, already is a relative term. Uh, we have pretty much everything in place that we need to have in place, but uh, there's a lot of polishing and refining and uh, last-minute modifications that go into it. So, um, yeah, I mean, all the pieces are there, but uh, we have still have a lot of work to do. So. Cool. Let's let's jump right into some of the sessions you're going to be talking about. I'll put your screen up, and then you can um, walk us through some of the stuff you're going to be doing, including um, okay. watching me over Skype. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, I guess let me take them in reverse order, actually, uh, because that's what I'd like to, the way I'd like to, to step you through the, um, uh, the overview of the actual, uh, you know, the demos, if cool. you would. Sounds good. Uh, first of all, I'm, uh, I, these are both team efforts. Uh, the first one I'm, well, the second one on the screen. I am uh, privileged to team up with Jose Pereira on uh, a renewable energy and uh, Java embedded talk. And we kind of came into this from, from opposite ends. Jose has a very nice, large um, installation of renewable energy, uh, you know, photovoltaic modules mm -hmm. and, and the system that surrounds that. And I was coming at it from a very small uh, scale installation. And we just kept meeting back in the middle and talking about Java Embedded Suite and using Java to monitor and manage uh, these installations and other installations, potential installations, and uh, we started thinking about what we could do to maybe bring that all together and not just uh, monitor the um, installations, but actually use those same installations to power it directly because it seemed really silly in a lot of cases what happens with power generation with renewable energy is you, you, uh, um, you generate it, you store it in uh, DC batteries, and then to use it in, in a lot of circumstances, a lot of uh, like houses and things like that or buildings, you convert that to AC. Well, yeah, all of our electronics inefficient. Uh, and and AC has advantages, you know, transmission, uh, distance transmission, and things like that. But it, it seems really silly to have your sensors and your equipment on D plugged in through a wall wart, which converts AC to DC, and then plugging that into a system that you've already converted from DC to AC. So we started uh, brainstorming and coming up with ways that we can make that a little more direct and closed loop and came up with uh, kind of the self-licking ice cream cone. The systems that monitor the renewable energy system also are powered directly by the uh, renewable energy system. Oh, so nice. uh, we, we've played with several different configurations and several different sensor bundles, but... Um, we have uh, uh, the, the system that we're going to be bringing to Java 1 is a very small scale, very portable, breakdownable uh, system. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of jokingly say that software, that's easy. Uh, hardware, that's, that's easy. Uh, figuring out how to get uh, all the equipment and fan and things like that we need out to San Francisco, that's <laughs> going to be pretty tricky. So I may be talking with you offline about that, but... Um, uh, I guess to kind of give you the nickel tour, I'm not sure how this will work, but what I'd like to do is pick up the computer and kind of uh, show some of the toys in the background. Okay. Uh, and then maybe uh, what I'd like to also do is, is plug in the wind machine uh, to get the wind turbine going and fire up the embedded server and just take a look at it in action. I'll try to make that as quick as possible. Uh, let, me, uh, let me unplug and untether here a little bit and see how that goes. Okay, are you still on my desktop? I switched, if you I switched could. to, um, well, I'm back on your desktop now. <laughs> if you would uh, pop off that, and then I will go to live mode. Okay. So you want me to show your um, video shop? Yes, Got please. It. Ah, here we go. Okay, hopefully I won't uh, drop this. I moved everything. I have an office downstairs, so of course with this being uh, somewhat dependent upon the sun, uh, when one of my daughters moved off to college, I kind of took over her room for uh, uh, at least the next month. So if what you see here in the back is a 50-watt solar panel, that's relatively small, uh, but it works really nicely on a house or hobbyist uh, scale. I'll actually not be bringing that because what I found is while the wind turbine you see in front of that is very easily broken down and assembled, 
uh, solar panels uh, are very easily broken. <laughs> so what I did was uh, get a, a small one that's used for cars and uh, motorcycles to keep the battery topped off, mm -hmm. and I'll be bringing that. It's about a 2-watt by comparison. This is about a 50-watt that you see behind me. Uh, this is a wind turbine. It puts out uh, a maximum, really, of about... Um, I guess it's almost three amps when everything is, is flowing smoothly uh, and high winds, uh, which uh, too high, obviously, you have a different kind of problem. Over here, you see a small 12-volt battery. Uh, and again, uh, my installation that I have is actually several uh, much larger batteries, but this is much more transportable. And I have, uh, for ballast back behind my uh, frame that I built out of PVC pipe, I have a stapler just to, to hold that down. <laughs> but you also see the uh, terminal block and the uh, sensor bundle. And I sent some pictures of that, uh, and I'll share those with uh, you. Let's see. Over here is the Raspberry Pi server cool. and the uh, USB hub. And then uh, we have the uh, receiving Arduino with a small NRF24L01 uh, radio. And Jose and I are doing a couple different um, different kinds of radio. He's uh, setting up a configuration with XBs. I'm using the NRF24L01. Each has advantages, but... Uh, that's the quick tour, and then let me uh, let me fire up the wind machine, set you down for a minute, see if that works. If it's too loud, I'll shut Sounds it off. Good. But I'll be right back. Okay, too loud? Can you yeah, still no, no, hear that's me? Fine. <laughs> Okay, now for the fun part, let's get back over to a terminal window. And we'll fire up the uh, Jazz server. And I'll plug back in my external keyboard. That makes things a little handier. Cool. Anyway, uh, really quickly, uh, we're using for our um, sensors, again, the, the configuration that we're bringing is primarily Arduino-based uh, uh, on the, uh, the remote sensors because Arduino has a, a, a few distinct advantages. The language that you use to develop for the Arduino platform is very Java-like. Uh, it's based on processing. Uh, in fact, the IDE is even written in Java. Uh, it also, the Arduino has a lot of add-on boards, uh, shields they mm -hmm. call them. It's very inexpensive, very easily attainable. Uh, they're available everywhere, and they run on a wide variety of voltages. So you can power it uh, from a overcharged battery to an undercharged battery, and the thing just keeps going. So it's very nice. Uh, the little radios I'm using, again, are the uh, Nordic Semiconductor NRF24L01s, which are dirt cheap, about a dollar a piece, a little over a dollar a piece when bought in bulk. So you can uh, network them, create sensor meshes for very little money. Uh, the XPs are a little more expensive, but they're a little more straightforward in how they handle things and a little more capable, so it depends on what you want. Uh, let's see, I have that up and almost running now, or I guess it is running. It's just not showing any uh, readings. It takes a reading about every 30 seconds. Yep. And, oh, one problem. I did not plug in my uh, remote sensor bundle yeah. so that uh, that would probably help that could be a problem so let me reach over here and do that's that that's how we know this is a real demo because <laughs> if it all goes perfectly the then we know it's all canned <laughs> that's right no chance of that let's see okay are you back on the desktop yep, yep on the desktop okay Excellent, excellent. So slight, so slight we'll, delay on what we're getting, but we, we see a couple zeros now. Okay. Well, those aren't the good numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, now we're getting actual readings. Cool. What we wanted to do is not just uh, monitor the, the power... Um, the power production, but we also wanted to try to, to capture a few other things. And in my case, with this bundle, what I'm capturing is the ambient temperature and relative humidity, nice. as well as the voltage, the, the current. Um, now let's go back over here. 
And the nice thing about Jazz is it gives you a lot of the capabilities of a full-blown server uh, for 35 bucks. So you can deploy this and get RESTful web services. Uh, you can um, run servlets. There's going to be a, a change in architecture coming up, and we don't know all the specifics, but, um, but what we're doing is showing what we have here now. And as you can see, it, it happily pulls uh, in the last reading. If you want to uh, query the database, it's uh, out on the pie. It quickly and easily does that. You can pull up a listing. Uh, just kind of some basic, uh, basic stuff that, again, is really easily handled by the uh, Java embedded suite running on the pie. Cool. So let me kill that, and we'll move into the second part. And let's see, the second part. OK, I shouldn't have. Uh... Yeah, no. The second session, I'm working with um, Hendrik Ebers, Carl D. And uh, Garrett Grunwald has been uh, involved uh, at, throughout uh, to some degree, one degree or another. And uh, Hendrik, I don't know if you've uh, been keeping up or the folks have been keeping up with uh, the neat things he's doing. But what we wanted to do is look at a couple different takes on frameworks. Oh, let me shut off that noisemaker. You know, that would make, uh, make the things a little bit nicer. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> much better. OK. Uh, Hendrik has a really nice setup on the Raspberry Pi, which is almost like a Roku or an Ouya, where it, uh, it, it takes it over and uses it as a media center. Very nice, um, full screen games, different apps. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. If people haven't checked it out, uh, please follow him on Twitter, check out his YouTube uh, videos, just great stuff. Uh, Carl and I have been tag teaming on the other side of that, and um, Carl had a really great idea to kind of pay homage to the uh, widget FX that uh, you and Keith had uh, had done in the past, and a lot of other contributors as well. And there, there's in the Java FX world, it seems like there are a lot of neat widget ideas that are just kind of crying out for a way to uh, to track them and launch yep, them yep. and and manage them. And um, Carl and I have been working on that. He's been handling all the back-end development. I've been handling things more from the front-end developer of somebody who's been uh, wanting to come in and develop some widgets, some desktop useful applications that are uh, managed and deployed by this framework. So uh, we should have some interesting t stuff to show. I'll fire up something now, just to give you a hint. And let me minimize uh, some of the other things. <laughs> We've got a lot of debugging information still showing, so I'll cover that up. That's, that's again how you know that it's real stuff, not... <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Nothing canned here. Okay. This is a Tron clock that Carl has oh, developed. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. Does yeah. a uh, proof of concept. And then I have a, a little app here I call the Pidget, which is just my picture widget. Uh, that allows you to drop any pictures you want in a directory, and it'll pull automatically from that nice. directory and cycle through them as time goes on. Uh, just kind of a nice little, uh, you know, electronic photo frame type cool. of app. So you're a, you're a big then, NASA uh, fan. <laughs> yes, space. Um, and then the last one is a ticker uh, widget that I created. Um, and what I wanted to do is is build this to accept a number of different feeds. Right now, uh, I can plug in a Twitter feed or a Facebook feed and search. Uh, ultimately, we have a lot of ideas. There, as you know, there's never a shortage of ideas. Is and we just the more we do, the more it's back and forth, and the more we put on the list. But uh, right now, what we have on the screen is the uh, basic launch tray, uh, Tron clock, Pidget, and uh, ticker. Nice, so nice. that's kind of a hint of, of some of the things on the uh, one side of the uh, the frameworks and widgets um, talk. So that's pretty much uh, all the show and tell I have. Any uh, any questions? Anything? Well, cool. now folks on the stream have been really impressed with with all the stuff. Like um, very impressed with the ticker with the um, perpetual ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and a lot of this stuff, as everyone's well aware, a lot of it, you know, the tools just give you so many opportunities to do such uh, productive stuff and, and enjoy yourself while you're doing it. So uh, we've, we've really kind of had a good time with it and just, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated like the, the picture widget. Uh, it just uh, has to be something that you find useful and you say, you know, why not? Let's, let's do that. So uh, it's our goal with the framework um, and, and with the embedded as well is to have something that's, that's fairly quick and easy and inexpensive to spin up and, and make something useful out of. And I think we've done that. Hopefully uh, 
you know, we can learn some uh, things from the attendees. You know, I mentioned in the, the blog post that uh, the birds of a feather really is kind of a neat format because it's it's more of a round table than it is yeah. say um, yeah definitely a, a session. You know, everybody kind of throws in their two cents and, and everybody learns. So. Cool. Now, thanks for taking your time out, Mark, and um, I look forward to seeing you at Java One San Francisco. Can't wait. Thank you, okay, Steve. Okay, you want to say bye bye? Wave bye bye. Okay, so I killed the recording officially. Uh, okay, we're still broadcasting thanks. though, so you can check the chat out and chat with folks.